Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bankim Mahanta and I am from India. Today I will be sharing my experience with the 3G Deep Laboratory at the Department of Civil Engineering, Monash University. Currently I am working as an assistant professor in the Department of Geology, School of Earth Sciences at the Central University of Tamil Nadu in India. Before I start my experience, I would like to provide my brief academic background. I have completed my bachelor's degree in geology from North Orissa University followed by my master's degree in applied geology from IIT Bombay specializing in engineering geology. After that I joined IITB Monash Research Academy to continue my higher education. IITB Monash Research Academy is a joint venture between Indian Institute of Technology Bombay in India and Monash University in Australia. PhD through IITB Monash Research Academy is a joint PhD program between IIT Bombay and Monash University during which students need to perform part of their work at IIT Bombay and part of their work at Monash University. From July 2014 to 2016, I did the first half of my research work at IIT Bombay and in 2017, I went to Monash University to perform the remaining part of my research work required for its completion. After four and a half years of research work at both the universities, I graduated in January 2019. The topic I have worked on is investigation and assessment of physico-morphological and thermomechanical responses of few sedimentary rocks, which focuses on domains like experimental rock mechanics, high temperature and pressure geomechanics, and digital petrophysics, for which I received the Excellence in PhD Research Award in 2020. During this research work, I was associated with four supervisors, Prof. T. N. Singh and Prof. Bikram Vishal from IIT Bombay, and Professor Ranjit and Professor Wenhui Duan from Monash University. Professor Ranjit was my main supervisor from Monash University. Currently, I am working as an assistant professor in the Department of Geology, School of Earth Sciences at the Central University of Tamil Nadu. Before joining my current position, I worked as an IG High Postdoctoral Associate in the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Calgary with Professor Jeffrey Priest where I was working on the geomechanics of induced seismicity during hydraulic fracturing. Apart from the PhD and postdoctoral work, I am interested in domains like geological carbon sequestration and rock fracture mechanics. The 3G deep group at Monash University is headed by Professor Ranjit, a fellow of the Australian Academy of Technology and Engineering and a prominent multidisciplinary researcher with an impactful contribution to innovate in rigorous science and effective technologies for energy production and minerals from deep in the earth. Additionally, Professor Ranjit has been appointed as the Editor-in-Chief for Geomechanics and Geophysics for Geoenergy and Georesources Journal. With state-of-the-art, world-class experimental and simulation facility, the 3G Deep Laboratory at the Department of Civil Engineering focuses on various research themes for sustainable development of energy and resources such as CO2 sequestration, waste to wealth, geothermal energy, coal seam gas, cell and tight gas, hydrogen fuel, deep mining, gas hydrates, and underground coal gasification. Currently, the consumed global energy predominantly comes from oil, coal, and natural gas. Out of the total electricity production, coal contributes nearly 40% through thermal power plants. For countries like India, coal is the primary energy source due to its abundance and ease of exploration. The burning of these fossil fuels leads to various environmental issues such as air pollution by means of an increase in atmospheric greenhouse gases. While using these fossil fuels, various environmental problems need to be addressed. In such a scenario, various unconventional energy sources or alternative energy sources can be proved very useful to minimize such environmental impacts and fulfill the energy demand. Various unconventional energy sources are shale gas, coal bed methane, geothermal energy, gas hydrate, and underground coal gasification. Most of these unconventional energy sources are involved with various processes such as well bore stability, water flooding, hydraulic fracturing, enhanced oil recovery, where the associated rocks are exposed to different levels of elevated temperature and pressure. Generally, 
So unconventional reservoirs are of lower grade, having a reservoir permeability in the range of milli to nano darcy, which is far less than the permeability of conventional reservoirs. These unconventional reservoirs need improved technology and higher cost for successful exploration and exploitation. In countries like India, these energy sources are entirely unexplored, requiring various research for their development. The successful development of these less understood reservoirs can be achieved by addressing three significant concerns, their system integrity, the amount of pore volume present, and the ease of extraction, which can be explained in terms of the strength, the pore volume, and the permeability of the reservoir rocks, respectively. My PhD research focuses primarily on the strength and pore volume aspects of the reservoir rock. To achieve the research goals, we have considered sandstone and shales from different locations in India. Our focus was on understanding the influence of high temperature and pressure on rocks. During the research work, various micro to nano level investigations were carried out along with mechanical experimentation to better visualize the temperature and pressure effect on the rock structure. The Civil Engineering Laboratory at Monash University is equipped with various world-class facilities that provide a solid platform for students to perform their research work. I had done the majority of my experimental and a few computational work with the facilities at the 3G Deep Laboratory at Monash University. To accomplish the geomechanical investigations, properties like uniaxial compressive strength, tensile strength, elastic modulus, failure strain, poisons ratio, and damage factors were measured. The acoustic characteristics of the mechanical deformations of the rock were captured using A sensors attached to the specimens. The development of strains in the samples was captured by Aramis digital image correlation technique and strain gauges. Aiming for the in situ rock mechanical behavior, I have performed experiments using the high pressure and temperature triaxial ring present at the 3G deep laboratory which can go up to a maximum temperature of 300 degree centigrade and a pressure of 140 MPa. After the mechanical test, the failed samples were used to investigate the shear boundary characteristics at different temperature and pressures using the Australian synchrotron facility present in Melbourne. The various structural damages in rocks in the form of cracks are due to induced thermal stress. The differential thermal expansion of different minerals along different crystallographic axes give rise to various levels of thermal stress in the rocks that result in structural damage. Also, the structural damages in rocks are due to various chemical reactions and phase changes of the minerals because of increasing temperatures. We have quantified the damage factor of the thermal treated and rapid pool specimen to measure the extent of structural damage in the structures of the rock. When a material undergoes irreversible changes in its internal structure such as crack formation and plastic deformation, it radiates acoustic waves. Using different sensors, the crack development phenomena can be captured and processed to delineate valuable information about the cracking process such as crack initiation stress and crack damage stress. Additionally, I have mapped precise source localization of the cracking phenomena in the rock under the stress conditions. Upon exposure to high temperatures, the crack initiation stress threshold ratio and crack damage stress threshold ratio follow a decreasing pattern which indicates the early occurrence of both the crack initiation and crack damage event in the thermally treated sandstone. Also a comparison between the Aramis images of thermally treated and rapid cooled specimens suggested clear development of well distributed more significant strains for rapid cool specimen than thermally treated specimens. After the triaxial mechanical test, the failed samples were used to investigate the shear boundary characteristics at different temperatures and pressures using the Australian synchrotron facility present in Melbourne. Here, inside and outside shear zones are taken for consideration and analyzed for their grain size variation and porosity. The microstructural observations of the sandstone was performed using the computer tomography based concept of digital petrophysics that enable visualizing and quantifying the pore volume, microstructure and pore network models of sandstone 
with varying temperatures and loading stress. The analysis process involved image acquisition and enhancement followed by their analysis using image analysis software Abrico. Using such analysis tool, the different phases in the 3D generated volume can be segmented into the matrix, connected ports and non-connected ports and fractures. Intensifying the analysis, the core network models of the sandstone can be performed for various temperatures and loading conditions where the pores and throats are being represented as spheres and cylinders respectively with an equivalent volume of pores and throats in the rock. Increasing temperature illustrated a clear indication of the development of new pores and throats in the rock. Different pore network attributes such as pore radius, pore volume, coordination number, throat radius, and throat channel length were quantified from the pore network model. Their statistical frequency distribution was performed to have detailed information about the microstructural alterations of the sandstone. The new findings of the research work have been published in various reputed international journals such as Engineering Geology, Journal of Natural Gas Science and Engineering, Journal of Petroleum Science and Engineering, and Engineering Fracture Mechanics. Additionally, a portion of the research findings have been presented at various international conferences such as American Geophysical Union Fall Meeting in 2016 at San Francisco, Europe 2017 Conference at Ostrava in Czech Republic and IC3G 2018 Conference at Chengdu in China. My experiences with Professor Ranjit and the 3G Deep Group were really overwhelming. Although I was there at Monash University for one year, but it was very much prolific for my research work, particularly for its completion. It was really a remarkable experience to work with Professor Ranjit during my work at Monash. He was very supportive of my research work. From time to time, we used to have meetings considering the progress, obstacles, and timely completion of the research work. His supervision inputs were very helpful in forming a strong platform for my research career. This association is not only limiting to my Monash stay. His valuable suggestions and opinions are imperative even after that. In addition to the 3G Deep Group, all other staff were also very welcoming and supportive. In addition to academic responsibilities, PhD students should get themselves some time for non-academic activities. Australia is full of mind-blowing landscapes and natural wonders that are perfect for outdoor adventures when it comes to outdoor activities. During my short stay in Melbourne, I visited some of the spectacular wonders such as Phillip Islands, Mackenzie Falls, Grampian National Park, Great Ocean Road, 12 Apostles in Victoria and Sydney Opera House in New South Wales. Overall, it was an outstanding experience for me both academically and non-academically. Thank you.